so welcome back. Uh, we had kind of the lab in the middle of the unit, uh, but we've actually got a little bit more to learn about in this unit, uh, and that is actually the float property. So we've kind of always said that we were worried about display, uh, position, and float as kind of our primary uh, CSS properties for layout. Uh, we've talked about two of them. The first one had four options. The second one has four options. Uh, this one has three options. Um, so our matrix here actually has another dimension, right? So it's not it's not that it's 16 combinations, um, it's that it's 48 combinations, right? So it's three-dimensional. Um, but it turns out not really to be that complex, kind of like how we simplified the other one down to just nine. Uh, really, it was just seven. Um, float is not going to actually add another dimension. But that's one way you can think about it. So first off, let's talk about what float can be set to. So it can be set to right, left, or none. None is the default, uh, and so none is what you see most of the time. And what float right does is it just takes the element and it just slams it to the to or right, right slams it to the right wall. Uh, left, of course, does the opposite, um, and it just slams it all the way over uh, to the to the left wall. Right, it does respect margins and things like that, but it's a way just to slide things all the way over. And you actually see things like this used even in Bootstrap, right? So whenever it's got like anchor links up here, um, and there's some on the right and some on the left, it's just using float to slam it over to the left or the right. So even though float is older, um, float has some quirks. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about that later. It is still a very useful property. Um, and so honestly, I thought someday I'm going to never have to teach float again. Uh, but that doesn't really happen because it still has value. Let's see some examples um, of you know, the right ways to use float. So the first example is with float none. So we've got two boxes here, and we're going to give them the same properties. Right now they have float none. So they've got you know static set on them, and they've got block set on them. Uh, and you can see that uh, because they've got block, nobody else is on the line. Uh, because they've got static, you know they're they're in the flow, they're taking up their space. Um, and float is none. So that's what we've been doing this whole time is float none. Let's add a float rule of left to these guys and see how it changes things. So you can see that float behaves very differently, right? So now they're both floats. Um, and you can see that box number one got, got slammed over to the side, uh, and then box number two also got slammed over to the side. And you can see that they are, you know, in line, so people are with them. So they, they behave different. Um, so their, their size is respected, uh, but their, their position is, you know, wherever they, they got slammed to, so left and, the, and then there's right. Some of the details you worry about in an exercise, but this is float left. Float right shouldn't be too surprising to you. It slams them over to the right, right? Um, so now you can see that they're both slammed over to the right. These files, by the way, are in your code used in lecture if you wanted to see it. Other things that I should tell you about with floats is that there's another property called clear um, that says whether you want the next float uh, to slam up next to you um, or whether you would like for the next float to be on the next line, right? Um, and so the clear property um, is one you could say clear um, I'm on the left don't let anybody be on the line uh, clear right or clear both um, there's a lot of interesting things going on with with clear and float and I could talk about it uh, but I think really examples are better uh, and then the exercises are better let's talk about one more thing just just briefly um, and that's containing the float um, so this example we're just gonna have to go open it to really appreciate what's going on here so if you go ahead and go into your uh, code used in lecture, find the float property folder, and let's go ahead and look at this containing a float and say open with uh, system editor. And this is actually one we're going to talk about quite a bit, uh, and that's uh, trying to, to contain things. So you can see that right now uh, it's, it's inside this float, uh, and then as I get bigger, um, you can see that the blue box continues to stay um, around this thing. And the reason that is doing it that way, and so that's kind of the behavior you might expect, is because the parent has a rule called overflow hidden. However, if you take this rule, so here I've done an inspect element, if you take this rule off, so you remove this rule, um, you can see that floats behave kind of differently, right? And the interesting thing is the float is not really uh, inside its parent anymore, because if its parent got smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, you can see that it actually extends out the bottom. So there's some interesting things, uh, and we're going to talk about, about the problems with floats as we go, uh, but there's some interesting things with floats that make them a little quirky, 
but they're still very, very useful. So what we're going to have you do to kind of learn more about it is some exercises. Uh, so you, I won't go through it this time, but you can click on this link. Uh, there's three float exercises. Uh, go work the float exercises, and you'll know a lot more about floats. All right, that's it. See you next time.